Come and let your presence fill this place. Let's all stand together. Come and let your presence fill this place. Let's just stand before the Lord right now. We present ourselves to you, Lord. We wait on you, God. We expect a mighty move of your spirit this morning because we're here and you're here. And you promised us that you'd be with us, Lord. And when you're with us, you are who you are. And when you are who you are, you do what you do. So we expect you to pour out your spirit on us, Lord. We expect you to move in power. We expect you to set us free. We expect people to be healed. We expect people to be saved. Lord, we expect destinies to be launched. We expect dreams to be fulfilled. Lord, we expect to encounter you in a powerful way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you now, the greatness of your renown. I have heard of the majesty and wonder of you, King of heaven in humility. I bow as your love in wave after wave. Crashes over me, crashes over me. You are for us, you are not against us. Champion of heaven, you made a way for all to enter in.
shore into the way. We want to go deeper with you, Lord. You make me brave. You make me brave. No fear can hinder the love. The love that made a way. You make me. You make me brave. is you
us and I know you will because that's your heart for us that we would be fully conformed to your image that our thoughts would become your thoughts and our ways would become your ways it's easy to get distracted in the world in which we're living today it's easy to get overwhelmed with all the things that are happening, with the insecurities and all the threats that seem to be around us, even, even all of the difficulties that we find in our own lives. I just remind you of the word we preached a few weeks ago, 
God's up to a whole lot more than it looks like right now. That God is not sleeping. God is aware. He is awake. He is working. And he's working all things out together for his good. It may not look like that, but it is that way. Even the things that are concerning you right now, he is working all of that stuff out in a way. You know why? Because you're called according to his purpose. You've lined your thinking with his, and you've lined your ways with his ways. And you're walking in the security of Christ. You're walking in a place of safety and a place of rest. You're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my strength. He is my fortress. He is my refuge. In Him will I trust. And we honor Him in everything that we do. Our faith is in Him. Our faith isn't in the government is not in the political systems. It's not in the economies of the world. It's in him. That's why we defy what the world would call logic. And that's why we operate by faith. Because we see things in a way that the world can't see them. Most of the world would think, I could never tithe. I can't get 10% of what I have. I don't have enough now. But the children of God understand the place of security and safety is a place of faith-filled obedience to the Lord. God's heart. What do you think God's heart is to make it hard for you? No, it's to be God in you with all the power and with all the peace and with all the grace that heaven can afford. Lord, I pray for you, children, and I pray for this house. I pray for us that we won't ever get caught up in this mentality. The, the world's just going to hell, and I don't know what I'm going to do, but, Lord, we believe that you are work in, at work in the world to bring the adjustments that are necessary to turn the eyes and the hearts of men toward you, to bring them to a place where they must... In, they must decide. In desperation, when everything else falls around them, they must look and decide, will I trust God? Will I commit my life to him? We have, we have, we say, we trust God. In God we trust, don't we? Come on, speak it with me. In God we trust. In God we trust. In God we trust. Not the dollar that is written on but the God it makes the declaration about. So, Lord, I pray for grace for your people. How many of you have need? How many of you need a job? Raise your hand. Lord, I pray for those. Keep your hand up. Stretch your hand toward anybody that's got a hand up. Lord, you're our provision. When Elijah needed a meal, you sent him by a brook, and you set him there, and you took care of him. And you caused the raven to bring him your provision. And then when the brook dried up, you said, go over here to Zarephath, and I've got a widow there. She'll take care of you. And in taking care of you, I'll take care of her. And he obeyed the Lord, and he went over there. He didn't fear. He just walked in obedience, and God was his provision. Lord, these, your children, need a job. They need, you are their source of provision. So I pray your Holy Spirit direct them in I pray in specific ways and in a timely way this week to find your channel of provision for them in this season in their lives. I pray it in Jesus' name. I pray for financial breakthrough as we just stand before you as the God who provides all things. And we declare we'll be a people to put your kingdom first before everything else. And we won't be anxious for the things that we can't change, Lord, but we will be at peace in you and trust you to provide every need. In Jesus' name, and God's children say, come on, let's worship the Lord with our giving today. much it hurts you are the healing in my heart when all that I can see are broken
broken memories You are the light that's in the dark You are the song, you are the song I'm singing You are the air, you are the air I'm breathing You are the hope, you are the hope I'm needing oh, oh, oh. You are Thank you, Lord And with my circumstance Leaves me with empty hands You're the provider of my couple of individuals that have been very important to Bethel over the years, but they're not individuals anymore. Now they're a married couple, and they have been for a little while. Thanks, Steve. So I'm going to have uh, Andrew, Andy, and Heidi. Hakes come up. We're going to participate. We're going to have a baby dedication. We're going to de dedicate Samuel to the Lord this morning. And the exciting thing is that you all get to be a part of it, right? How many of you parents would say, I need other people to be able to speak godly wisdom into the life of my kids, regardless of what age they are? Yes. Anyone? Yes. Amen. So if your hand's up, that means you have an obligation to do this with them. And just so you know, individuals that do not have children can speak life into children as well. Amen? Amen. And any family members, any friends that would be here, don't hesitate. Come on up. And let's support them this morning. Hi. You guys can step out so everybody can come in behind you. Wow, this is cool. Why don't half of you come over on this side and balance out the boat a little bit? Amen. It does take a village. And this is a small village, but they can always use more, right? That doesn't mean you have to come up. Hi, little man. Don't you wish you could crawl inside of their brains and just find out what are they thinking? I mean, should I take a step forward or a step back? Am I going to freak them out? Hi. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to come here like this. Maybe this would be better. 
<laughs> He's not sure. <laughs> Do you have something you want to share before we pray? Uh, in, uh, or I should stand with so many people. I'm going to stand in front of you. Is that okay? All right. This is in Deuteronomy. And uh, I was just thinking about this passage. You know, typically we, I mean, we pray over everyone and we dedicate the baby. But it's, it's kind of a commissioning for the, for the parents, too. And just a reminder on how they're supposed to raise their children. And in Deuteronomy 6, 5, it says, um, You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you want, lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them up as a sign on the hand, and they shall be a frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. <clears throat> when we're praying over parents, we don't know. We want to make sure that we give them good, good instruction, you know, because we're not sure of their background. We, we know both of you very well. And, and I know that, that this passage of Scripture means something to you. It's something that you'll communicate to your you know, your children um, because it's the center of your life. Jesus is the center of your life. But that passage talks about how we talk about it all the time when we're sitting down at the table, when we're walking down the sidewalk. And it's so important. You know, this is this is just as much for all of us as it is them. It's so important for us as parents and people around children to make sure that we keep that in front of their eyes because the culture would choose to steal what you're trying to instill in your children at every glance, around every corner. And it's important for us as a church community to gather around the children and the teenagers and the young people and guard them from the infiltration of that poison that's out there in the world. And uh, it's easy to do it in home when they're around you not so easy when they're not around you, you know, so, so my prayer is that the things that you instill in your, your children would, would, as they go out, that they'll remember those things, those seeds that, that are sown, and there would be other people, other believers in the community that are thinking, thinking and praying for the same thing, so, um, before Ron prays for Samuel, I want to pray over you guys, and if everyone can just kind of put your hands on Andy and Heidi. Lord, I just thank you for these two. Um, they've been a fixture here at Bethel for a long time, and it's a—it's not one of those fixtures in your home that gathers dust and you just start to ignore, you know. But they're—they're they're people that you placed in this house to be, um, to be a vibrant reminder of your love and a vibrant reminder of how you work in individual lives and you bring two people together so that they become one and they become mightier than they would have been when they were alone. So, Lord, I thank you for these two and all that they've sown into this house and sown into the people's lives in this house. And, Lord, I just, I just say this to them, that, um, Lord, that you will equip them and give them all that they need to raise Samuel to be a godly young man. And, Lord, we pray this often, but we pray at a very young age that he would know you. I'm thinking of all those Old Testament giants that you visited when they were they were children, they became leaders when they were some of them in their their single digits, some young teenagers, because Lord, they were just they were so sold out for you. They knew who their God was. So we just pray, Father, that they would be able to demonstrate to Samuel what it means to walk in intimacy with your Father, how to be a son, how to be a daughter. It's so critical in this age that we know who we are and we know who our Father is. So, Lord, draw them close to you, and may they demonstrate your love and your peace and your confidence to, to their young sons. Amen. We just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to pray for Samuel real quick, all right? If you guys will commit to being a part of their lives and praying for them, I just want you to stretch your hands out towards them. Father God, we thank you for little Samuel. His name means called by God and heard by God. And we know that um, we know that children learn, they, they establish their values, and they learn 90% of the things that they are going to learn before the age of five. So God, I pray in particular um, for the next few years of his life, the next three, four years of his life, Father God, that you would 
impart such a deep, rich wisdom, um, not just a knowledge of you, but a sensitivity to, to you and your leading. And I know that he's going to get the majority of that from his parents, but I pray that you would help us uh, as a congregation to be able to play the part that you would want us to play uh, in this family's life, in this little boy's life. And Father God, I pray that he would be a, a, a young man that would grow to know you as I pray for all children, uh, that he would come to know you as his personal Lord and Savior at a very young age, that he would do mighty exploits, that he would be uh, a young man that would be humble, that would be sensitive to the leading of your Holy Spirit and courageous and bold enough to be able to do the things that you call him to do. And as a result of it, that he will, he will shake the earth for you. He will bring many people and snatch them uh, from the hands of the enemy for you. And many people will come to a relationship as a result of his boldness and his courage. And we thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. That's a lot of family and friends. That's awesome. How's everyone doing this morning? You doing well? You're a little quiet this morning. How's everyone doing this morning? All right, that's, it. That's, that's much better. That's much better. Wow. We've had a great month. It's been a good month. We've had uh, lots, lots happen the past month. We've had a missions team that got back from... Columbia, and uh, we had our Rock Fest last uh, last weekend, and it was just it was an awesome time. You heard some of the some of the testimonies. We'll have more time for that. We have a lot going on this morning, so we're going to hold off the testimonies until next week. But it's just exciting to see what the Lord is doing in this house and through your lives. You know, God is good, isn't He? Isn't He good? He only wants good things for us. But you know what I love about God? He knows how to apply the right amount of pressure too. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes we need pressure to kind of shake us up a little bit to remind us, you know, we can't do this on our own, that we need him, we need his guidance. And I just, I just thank the Lord for that. Uh, Lord, I just, um, I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in this, in this house. And Lord, that you're, that you're a good father. And a good father corrects his children, admonishes his children, knows how to how to apply that, that right amount of tension in our lives to remind us, Lord, who we're anchored in. And, Lord, we're anchored in you. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, that you just desire to richly bless us and to move us to that, that place, Lord, where, where our lives will be like fruit, be like trees that are planted by streams of living water that bear fruit. Lord, we want to bear fruit. We want to be sons and daughters that bear fruit, sons and daughters that that reflect the love of Jesus Christ and, and, and people whose truths are on our tongues and on our lips. Because, Lord, we know that, that it's the love of Jesus Christ that transforms lives, lives but it's not, it's not just the love of Jesus Christ, it's the truth of your word also. So, Lord, we thank you that we're anchored in both of those things. We're secure in your love, and we know your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I want to welcome any guests. I'm a little bit insecure without the podium in front of me. I just realized that. It's like you can't hide behind here. There we go. I feel better. <laughs> if you're a guest here, we would love for you to fill out one of the communication cards in the back of the seat pockets, or in the back of the seats. But the seat pockets are in front of you. That's always perplexing to me. It's in front of you, but it's in the back of the seats. If you could grab one of those communication cards and fill them out, we would love a record of your visit. And if you bring them over to the Get Connected, we'll give you a free beverage card so you can have an awesome drink in the, in the cafe. Um, also, there's a, a Beth Moore simulcast. And the reason why we hand out these multicolored things right here is because we can't, we can't announce everything that's in there. So all the details for the, the Beth Moore simulcast is in here. It's actually not here, I love partnering with other churches to, to do events like this. It's going to be at Parrington Community Church, and uh, the address is on there, and it's September 12th, 9.30 a.m. to, uh, to 5, 
5.15, so it's like an all-day thing, and they have a lunch, lunch, yeah, it includes lunch, so, you know, ladies, grab a friend and, and go to this thing. Beth Moore is an awesome teacher. I know, I know that you're going to be blessed. Um, now, we have an exciting announcement to make. Um, my dad has been serving in ministry longer than 50 years, and I know it's, it's been longer than 50 years, hasn't it? He attended college at Bible or Zion Bible Institute, and the name has changed. Now it's called Zion Northeast. Yeah, is that correct? And uh, um, Matt, who's on the board at, at Zion, is here. Uh, you're, you're with the, the alumni committee, correct? And he's going to hand out an award to my dad. So I'm going to have my dad come up here. I'm going to have Nat come up here and my mom. Yeah, that's good. So now tell us what this is all about, will you? I'll try. 50 years. It's my honor this morning to be here for this memorable occasion and this noteworthy award given to Pastor Ron Domina. On a personal note, my association with him began over 50 years ago when we were students together at Zion Bible Institute and some good friends. And then since then, our paths have gone in different directions. The Lord has given us various types of ministries, but I've always tried to keep abreast of what they have been doing. And it's amazing to see what God has done in them and through them. This church is an evidence of that. Well, even though they were 50 years graduating the school in 1965, they went directly into ministry, and Ron, with the aid of his dear wife, Karen, went to Massachusetts first, and then to Connecticut, and then to the state of New York. And then in 1980, they received a call to come to this church, Bethel Christian Fellowship in Rochester, New York, where they have been here since that time. And it has been the Lord that's been doing the work, both here and everywhere. Not only has he been a ministry to lay people, but also leadership. Not only locally here in Rochester, but internationally as evidence around all these flags around this building and our speaker even today. And it is with great honor, as I said, that I represent the alumni board and in fact all the membership of the Zion North Point Alumni Association in making this presentation to you today. Let's make it though. I didn't read it yet. Wait. Okay, hang on. <laughs> because, because we're videoing this and be, because we can't be at the alumni gathering in September, we're, they're videoing it. So you can edit part of this, Greg. Let's move on up here. Yeah, up. You no, know, it's better up there. Come on up. No, you come. See, I got to tell this story about my wife. I went back for my third year of Bible school just at the beginning. I met my wife as soon as I got in the sanctuary. And a month later, probably, thereabouts, I asked her to marry me because I believe I had had a divine encounter when I met her. <laughs> and then we decided to get married in June. We decided to get married in June. It's now probably October or so. And, uh, and, uh, my wife went home for Christmas uh, because of some things that happened there. She stayed there and worked so that we could get ready to be married just uh, right after we got out of Bible school. And uh, I want my wife with me today because you can't do 50 years of ministry without a good partner. Now, Nat, you can start whatever you want. In recognition of his 50 years of commitment to pastoral ministry in the local church and with appreciation for the dedication to the Church Universal as founder of the Life Net Apostolic Network, as well as for his great love and service on behalf of the nation of Israel, the Zion North Point Alumni Association is very pleased to name Ron Domina as our Alumnus of the Year. 
Proverbs 11.25, whosoever brings blessings will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Presented August 23rd, 2015, Bethel Christian Fellowship, Rochester, New York. Thank you very much. They were going to present this award at a alumni gathering in uh, September 25th or something like that, just the day after we're leaving for Israel. And uh, so I, I thank Nat for the honor, but I, I, wanted, uh, I, I wanted to have the opportunity to express to Zion for their years of dedication to raising up young men and women for the ministry, the importance of what they're doing. And this man, marked my life and my ministry, even my wife in the short time she was there so much because he was an instructor at the time doing various things and he led a group called the Zion Corlears, a, a, a small select musical traveling group who went from church to church and state to state ministering. And I grew more probably during that experience and learned more during that experience than almost all the classroom things that I took part of. And this man is part of the reason we're here today. God bless you. Hey. I mean that because when I was youth director for New York State and the Assemblies of God, we put together for the first time ever a traveling choir. I didn't direct it or lead it, but I found somebody <laughs> to do it. And it was there that some of the leaders of Bethel first heard and saw our ministry and were exposed to it and called us to candidate to become a pastor of this church. And it was because of the deposit that was made through this man in his ministry. Thank you. And my wife and I thank each of you for the privilege that we've had for third, over 35 years to be your pastor. God bless you. All right. Can't go anywhere. Where's, where's Ron, Laura, Hector? Are you right? You guys, can you guys come up here for a minute? Come, on, Beth. come, come up here. You know, typically you get, you get awards like this towards the end of your ministry career. But that's not, that's not the case here. Um, you know, I, I think this, this marks a, achievement of the past, you know, but I want to pray for, like, the next 50 years yeah. of ministry. Can, can we do that? I mean, we've really, and, and we haven't done this. We've been praying for 120 years. You know, we figure, why not? He's given man 120 years. So we pray, we, we pray for 120 years. So I just, I, I want to pray for the, for the next 50 um, because, because the ministry journey is not, not done. You know, we're all, we're all in shifting. There's, there, there's been changes, but it's, but it's not done. And God has much for you to accomplish, both of you to accomplish. And I just, I want to speak over the next 50, 50 years. And Hector, I'm sure, is going to help me too. Hector, you got to help me, okay, bro? All right, thank you. All right. Come on, everybody, just reach your hands out towards my, my dad and my mom. Lord, I just thank you for these two. Um, Man, I'm just thinking of all the seed that was sown all across the New York region and outside. Um, until, we, until we came here to Rochester, we moved around quite a bit as children. And uh, so, so this man and, and his wife have marked this whole region. You know, not just, not just Rochester, New York, but this, this whole region. Um, they've, they've influenced many to, to follow their call in ministry, and uh, even though that, that we didn't intentionally plant a lot of works out of this place unintentionally, Lord, that just happened. A lot of works were planted out of this place, and people were catapulted into ministry because of the leadership of this couple. So, Lord, we just thank you for all the, the good seed that was sown that is still um, bearing fruit probably all around the world. 
And uh, Lord, I just speak over him life, vitality, my mother, life and vitality for the next 50 years of ministry. Um, uh, it's, it's halfway through. You know, you, so you might have a midlife crisis. You might go out and buy like a Ferrari or something. <clears throat> what, do you, what do you do when you're halfway through your ministry? It's probably not appropriate to buy a Ferrari. A new Bible. You'll buy a new Bible. Okay. So, Lord, we just pray over the next 50 years of all that you're going to accomplish through, through these two. Um, Lord, as a father and a, and, and a mother in this house, still sowing into this house, but uh, not just here in, uh, uh, um, in, in Israel as a, a regional director, um, just influencing those to stand behind Israel, and uh, also through LifeNet Apostolic Network and all the pastors and ministry leaders this man sows into. Um, Lord, we know that the best days are ahead. I believe that always for, for those of us who are walking in you, the best days are ahead. And Lord, we are looking forward to that great harvest of which we will all participate in, being fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, discipling those that come into the fold. Uh, Lord, the future's awesome. And we're just expecting great, incredible things. Amen. You know, the, uh, the Lord honors those who honor him. And this day of honoring is not man-made, but it's coordinated and ordained of the Lord. And uh, as we were praying for you, I just saw a vision of you and uh, Pastor Karen, and I saw the two of you, and you were running this race. You were on one of those uh, those running tracks, and, and you put your all into it. You poured uh, yourselves out completely, and you were running, and you were arriving at that finish line, and you completed that lap. But suddenly, I, I heard the Lord saying, that's just the beginning. Now comes the other laps that are going to be released through you. But all of a sudden, it wasn't you and Karen anywhere. There were 50 that started running instead. And the Lord says, I'm about to leverage your anointing. I'm about to leverage your ministry. And now for uh, there's going to be even more laps that are going to take place. But it won't be you having to go and, and don't even worry about having to lay that groundwork again and all that. God says that season is completed. But now it's a season of sending the sons, sending the daughters. The Lord says they're going to run in your place. And they're going to run. And the laps are going to go faster and faster and faster. And the Lord says, I'm going to add uh, more ground to your territory uh, in the season ahead. So you're about to enter into the season of the promise fulfilled of all that you've seen way back in the time that you've not perceived how it could happen. God says, it's not going to be out of your effort just alone, but it's going to be the team that I launched through you that God says is going to go and they're going to build a team and they're going to build a team. And the Lord says, and that network, network is going to go forth mightily and gain new ground this season. And you're going to stand back and you're going to rejoice and you're going to see that everything that God has promised you and more has been fulfilled. I got to share one more thing about that. If those of you who have trained for marathons know that the, the last half of the marathon, you actually run faster than the first half. The first half is about pacing yourself. So that was a good word over you. The last half, you'll run it faster. There'll be, there'll be more fruit in the last half than in the first half. Amen. Yes, and Lord, we just thank you for uh, a renewing of the dew of their youth. We thank you, Lord, that this next season is a season of joy for them. It's a season where they minister out of rest, the rest of God, that assurance. But it is an active season, Lord. We thank you. We just declare over them the same words that were over Moses. That, Lord, even as he finished his race, his strength was not abated, nor were, were his eyes dimmed. Lord, I just thank you that there's sight, greater sight even spiritually, greater strength spiritually, and even physically, that, that all that's needed, Lord, for uh, the joy of this race. We thank you for it, God, for all of your provision and all of the connections and all that's needed, all the supply in Jesus' name. I just, uh, I, I just want to encourage all of you in this. Their, their joy in all of this is you. It's, it's always been about him, but it's always also been about you. So even as, as Hector prayed, I just want to encourage you guys. You guys want to bring joy to them. Just grab hold of the things that the Lord has deposited in you and, and just step out there and have some courage, have some boldness, and watch what the Lord will do through you. And, and this man and this woman will receive a lot of the benefit of that, but they will certainly receive the joy, but you will as well. So um, I just want you to know, I, 
you know, we've had some high times, we've had some low times. We've had some real easy times, we've had some real difficult times. And David and I, as family, we've, we've watched them take things to the Lord that were just so, so heavy. Um, but they stood in there, and they took it because of the joy that they had in every one of you. So um, we just want to thank you as a family for all that you are, for all that you have been, for all that you are now to the Lord, and for all that you're going to be. Amen? Amen? God bless you. <laughs> you know, you guys, you guys really make it a joy to pastor. You really do. I mean, we, we, we kind of have our ups and downs as pastors, and we have, our, we have our counseling appointments that, you know, we don't walk out, and there's, trust me, there's not joy in the room, and there's not joy when we leave the room. And, uh, but I could tell you, it's, it's an honor and it's a privilege to pastor, to pastor you folks. It's just, it's fun. And I'm excited about seeing where the Lord's going to bring this house. So, yeah, I love you guys too. We all love you guys. Um, once, uh, once a month towards the end of the month, we take, we take a missions offering. We really covet your prayers. Um, I don't know if we still have those those mission booklets laying around. If we don't, we we do. Okay, um, I know they get snatched up pretty quick, and we'll we'll try to keep copies on the table. We really want you to take those those booklets home and get to know the missionaries we support, so you know who they are. We want you praying for them. Most of them, you could I don't know they, they could email them themselves. I mean, there's a lot of emails in there. They would really be encouraged to hear from you. When we went to Colombia, um, it was so meaningful to. Um, Leslie, I don't know what's wrong with me, but it was, so, it was so meaningful for Leslie to have her church family there. I mean, she shed, she shed tears often just walking down the sidewalk with the team knowing that these folks were from her home church. It just meant so much to her. So I know it means a lot to our missionaries when they hear from us, when they hear from you guys. It's not, it's not enough that they just hear from the leadership. They need to hear from you. So grab one of those booklets, get to know our missionaries, be praying over them and praying over their families, praying over the work that they do. They're, they're real people just like you that have a different call to be in a different nation. And I can tell you they go through a lot of the same stuff that you go through. You know, so you need to pray about those practical things too. The prayer emphasis this past month has been Mark and Lyra Hamilton, who's in, uh, uh, they do ministry uh, through Young Life, or is it like Young Life? Yeah, it is Young Life, right? Yeah, Young Life in Belarus and the Baltics and uh, all, their, all their kids. And uh, also Open Door min Mission here uh, locally. And many of you have actually even preached over there. And uh, it's just an awesome ministry that they do here in the community. And then Charles Finney School, who's a, a Christian school here, that, that we are one of the founding partners of, uh, of Charles Finney, Finney School. And uh, some of your kids probably go there. And then also Beth, Bethany Christian Services, and we have some exciting news. They actually moved to an office in this house. Um, they, uh, they're going to be meeting, or their offices are going to be right outside our, um, uh, our receptionist desk. So uh, we get the privilege of actually having my sister-in-law and also Jen Anderson in the house during the week. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. So um, let's, just, uh, let's just bow our heads. We're going to pray for all these again, and then we're going to take our, our missions offering. Lord, uh, first, I just thank you for Mark and Lyra and, uh, and their family. Uh, it can't be easy traipsing across the world, living in a different culture with all your young, your young children. But, Lord, your grace is there and your grace is on them. Uh, they accomplish such great things. We've seen the videos of the camps that they do and uh, of, the, of the children that they impact. And we also know the trials, Lord, of just uh, staying in the country. Uh, there are times that they, they've had to move out of the country because they couldn't be in the country. So, Lord, we, we thank you, Father, for the sacrifice. And it's, it's an incredible sacrifice for them. It's a joy. But it's a sacrifice for them to be there. So we pray for continued provision for them. Lord, we also pray for our local ministries here, Open Door Mission, Charles Finney, and uh, Bethany Christian Services. Lord, we thank you that they're placed here in this community in Rochester. And it's an honor, honor and a privilege to be able to support them. Lord, the lives at Open Door Mission, um, 
changes and impacts our, our people that, that most of us don't have the opportunity or privilege to walk next to and see how, how Christ can take somebody who's literally living on the streets, bound in addiction, and set free. And so, Lord, we just pray over the discipleship program. They've made so many, so many good changes. And uh, one of those good changes is, is this discipleship program. Lord, we just pray that uh, you would just mark the people that were supposed to be in this discipleship program, because I know that some aren't ready for that. But, Lord, that um, after they go through this program, that they would understand that they have a new identity in Jesus Christ. That they're no longer the same person that came into that place. And they're a new man in you. And we just thank you, Father. And, Lord, we also lift up um, Charles Finney School in a, in a culture, Lord, that um, they're teaching something so counter to what you teach in your word. We need Christian schools in this community. We need the homeschooling community. We need people sowing the seed of, of the truth of God's word into their lives and into the minds of, this, of these youth. So, Lord, we just thank you for Finney. Um, my experience with Christian schools, my kids go to a Christian school, there's always lack of finance. They always need more finance. I pray that churches would just begin to partner with these Christian schools so that they can pay their teachers well. I know a lot of their teachers don't get paid well, but they're there as missionaries. But, Lord, I pray that they would get, they would get paid um, what, they're, what they're worthy to get paid of. And uh, so, Lord, just prosper these, uh, these schools. And we also lift up Bethany Christian Services. There are those, Lord, that are, that are living in our community and living in communities across the world that have no mother and father in their lives. They grow up with people that, that care about them in an, in an orphanage or a home, but it's not, it's not the same thing as having a father and mother. So, Lord, we pray that there would be a whole adoption movement in your church. That's been prophesied many times, that there would be an adoption movement, that, um, that, that you would move um, husbands and wives to take, in, to take in children, to father them and mother them in your ways. So, Lord, we thank you for all these ministries, and we thank you, Father, that we get the privilege to pray for them and to support them financially. And, Lord, we just pray over this offering. We pray, Lord, that you would multiply what's given today. And, Lord, that we wouldn't, wouldn't just continue to support those missionaries and ministries that we currently support. Lord, we desire to take on more partnerships with other ministries. And that can't happen, Lord, until the seed is sown. So, Lord, sow, sow the seed in their hearts. And then, Lord, from their pocketbooks also and their wallets. And we just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you in your giving. No one like
Life Theory Fellowship that meets it uh, every Sunday morning in our historic sanctuary, and one of his elders to Liberia. Whenever I've never been to Liberia before, we went there on a prayer mission to uh, to pray into some kingdom ventures and activities that some of our people from Bethel have begun over there. We recognized we had some impediments, some obstacles that were in the way, and we just felt we needed to go pray on site and do this. But whenever I go into a new nation, my prayer is always, God, I'm looking for divine connections. I'm looking for your ordained connections. Because every time I go into a nation, I know that it's new for me that God has raised up leadership in that nation that he would have us walk with and partner with. And... Uh, one, so the very first place I went, an early service Sunday morning, just a quick message, and then had to go to another place. Uh, we went to Jubilee and met Alan, Bishop Alan Clay and his wife, Fina. Stand up. and Fina, stand up. We welcome you today. Greet the people. Wave to them. Bless them. Alan, come on up. And uh, felt... Really, you know, you look for those connections and, and uh, that, you know, are Holy Ghost connections. And uh, it was with this young man, the youngest bishop in, in Liberia, one of the youngest Pentecostal bishops in Liberia. And, and it's been an honor and a privilege to get to know him and his wife and to have them with us all week long. They were at Life Tree last week, and it's an honor to have you minister the word of God to us today. Thank you. Welcome him. Hallelujah. Can I feel you this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> we bring you greetings from the Jubilee Praise and Worship Center back in Africa, Liberia. Just as uh, my father said, I am the, the first black son of Apostle Ron Domene. And I thought you would give the Lord a hand of applause. And this morning, I'm here with my wife. Uh, we came in the sanctuary last week, and I looked around. I saw flags and waving all over, but I didn't see any flag from, from Liberia. I was like, what is going on? And, and today, I'm here, and I'm praying. We are praying very hard that we have a flag from Liberia hanging here when I come back next year. Amen. Amen. We are from the Jubilee Praise and Worship Center where we serve about 23 of our churches back in Liberia. And we have two in a neighboring country called Freetown, Sierra Leone. And we want to be thankful to God for his hand upon our lives to serve. Amen. We want to thank God for our week here. We had a, a, a pleasant time with the Life, Life Tree Ministry, uh, Pastor Gary. We want to thank God for everywhere he took us. We had speaking engagements, and God moved the, the few days we were here. We want to thank God for our mother, and thank God for her so much. She, she is a sweet mother, and we want to thank God for you. I also want to thank God for uh, Pastor Ron, the pastor here. We want to thank God for allowing us to use your pulpit today to propound uh, God's word. Amen. 
We want to say God bless you and we are humble. Forget about my title. Look at Jesus because Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you just lift up your hands to the Lord a bit? Can I have somebody just punching some keys here? I just need a key puncher here. Just lift up your hands and begin to say anything you want to say to God. Just worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Just say anything you ought to say. I may not know what you want to say, but he hears. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, God. Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Of every situation that I've troubled my mind, all my cares and burdens unto you I roll. All my cares. And burdens unto you, I roll. Do I have people in this place that want to give all their cares and burdens to the Lord? Just, then just wave your hands as we go through this time of short worship to the Lord. And just begin to sing this song with me. Let your living water flow. For my soul, let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that I've troubled, troubled my mind, all my cares and burdens unto you. I roll. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's sing to Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 let us welcome the Spirit, Spirit, Holy Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. Somebody lift up your voice and worship the Lord this morning. Somebody lift up your voice and worship him this morning. Give him praise in this place. Give him glory. Give him honor. And he deserves your worship. He's worthy of praise. He worship of honor. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Ola la ba si kolo bo si ala da ba zima la bo kante kaya la la bo solo bo kita ya la ba. Oh, we worship your name. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Who can be compared to my God? Who is able like you are able? Who can do what you can do in my life? That's what I worship you this morning. Somebody join me to worship my God. He's able to do what no man can do. That's what I worship him. Mm. Oh, 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 oh
Zina yana da kotokolo bosi arabasi kelara. Lord, I spoke with you this morning, but I still want to speak with you again, O oh God, because you alone deserve all the worship, O oh God. When you woke me up, I saw the birds that fly worshiping you. I saw the trees waving their branches unto you, Lord. That's why I worship you this morning. Father, we thank you for the eyes to see, the minds to retain, and the wills to obey, the hearts to believe that as your word will come forth this morning, it will fall on fertile soil. We thank you that you will revolutionize this place from the back to the front, that even those under the sound of your voice this morning Lord, we see way where there is no way. That possibilities will come out of their impossibilities. In the name of Jesus, that you will continue to order their steps in your word. For the heaven and earth will pass, but your word will remain. So we thank you for your word. May your word be a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. That you will strengthen and quicken them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 14, the presence of the Lord is in this place. He's here. I want you to open up yourself and, and just experience him. Anything can happen right now. He's here. He's here. Just avail yourself. Open up. First Corinthians chapter 2, we begin reading at the 14th voice. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually descent. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Amen. From just this passage, I want to share briefly on the topic, moving 
into the supernatural. Can you look at someone and tell them, I'm moving into the supernatural? Say it like you mean it. Say, I'm moving into the supernatural. You have to say it like you are doing it. Say, I'm moving in the supernatural. Hallelujah. Moving into the supernatural. Every time uh, I read from this book of Corinthians, it interests me to know that God can use anybody who avail themselves. And Paul, who once used to be a persecutor, of Christians will come to this place at this time when he's preaching God's word, miracles and diverse kinds of miracles happening, but yet others will not believe that it was the same Paul. But that's okay. You see, when God gets ready to take you into the supernatural, it sounds or look foolish to those who see. But God will come here and minister to Paul. And the time of administration to Paul at this time in, in current was the time that Paul was going through a diverse time of trouble, trials, tribulation, hurt, pain. But you see, Paul addressed this book to the church of Corinth even though he was in agony, but he addressed this book with peace because everything he went through, he didn't see what he went through in the natural. He looked in the supernatural. So when he addressed the church of Corinth, he addressed them not in the natural, but in the supernatural. Sometimes when we go through our pains, our trials and tribulations, we remain in the natural and do things in the natural. But I've come to you this morning to let you know that we have to move in the supernatural. Are you here this morning? Tell somebody you have to move in the supernatural. You see, the, the natural causes you to, to lose or ruin your blessings. The natural puts you in the seat of the victim. And it tells you that why are you lifting your hands? You are a victim of things you did before. The natural will tell you, can't you see that you don't have a job? Why are you worshiping this morning? He puts you in the seat of the victim and victimizes you and make you to feel that all is lost. And that's what the natural does. He makes you to see things. He makes you to move by your sight. That's what the natural does. But when you enter the supernatural, it takes you from the seat of the victim to the seat of the victor. Who am I speaking to this morning? I've come to speak to some people. Who've been, who've been surrounded by the natural and still see themselves to be the victim. I've come to let you know that God has taken you from that seat of the victim and he has made you the victor. If you are that person, you will shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are not the victim. It's just that God took you through there so that he can announce you later. It's just that God is carrying you through what you are going through to prepare you for the storm. When God takes you out of where you are, you can go to the mountain and the mountain can give you way. The storm can come and it will do nothing to you because God has taken you through the process. When God is taking you through the process, don't look at it naturally. Look at it supernaturally. Are you here this morning? Yeah. Tell someone I'm moving into the supernatural. <laughs> Say like you mean it. Say I'm moving into the supernatural. <laughs> what others see to be failure, 
I see it to be success. Why others see to, to be temptation, I see it as a premise for God to catapult me to another level. Why others see as, as, as things that are not good, I see it as God is preparing me to take me to another level. I open my eyes into the supernatural. When you open your eyes to the supernatural, God is surely going to take you from the back and bring you to the front. You see, you see, uh, when, 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 when Caleb, Joshua, and the children of Israel, when they got up there to spy the land, Israel saw giants. Are you here this morning? What you see is not what is happening in the supernatural. Ladies and gentlemen, the supernatural controls the natural. So if you want the things around you to change, you have to move in the supernatural. Then the natural will change. You're not hearing me. The things that are happening in the, in the natural, they are not important because the supernatural control the natural. When you move in the supernatural, the natural will change. You believe that? You believe that? You have to move in the supernatural and forget about what is happening in the natural. If you want the things around you to change, lift up your eyes to the hills. From whence will come your help. Your help cometh from the Lord. Move in the supernatural. Let them say what they want to say. Let them do what they want to do. But my eyes are lifted unto the hills. From whence my help will come. My eyes are lifted to the supernatural. Amen. What others see as failure, you see it as a breakthrough. And Israel saw giants in the land. Caleb and Joshua saw a land that is flowing with milk and honey. What do you see? What you see is what you have. And in order to see, you can't just see with your mere eyes. You have to take a step in the supernatural. And that is why others will be seeing negative things around, but you will be seeing positive things. Because the way others see, you don't see like that. Your eyes are lifted in the supernatural. And, 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 and the word supernatural is a faith word. Because even though your hands are not touched, but you believe. Your ears are not heard, but you believe. But you see, God is a God who will do a thing beyond human comprehension. For eyes have not seen, neither ears have heard what God will do in your life only when you believe. And Caleb and Joshua saw a land. In fact, Caleb, with, it, with, with his supernatural eyes, he saw a region that he will build his community for he and his family. Even though others saw giants. This morning, I release a prophetic verdict in your life, in your, in your jobs, in your home, that everything you see on the contrary, that God will bring you back in the supernatural. Even if it is your job, your project, I declare that God will bring them back on course in the name of Jesus. I pray that your negative mind, your mind that is thinking that it will not happen, I declare that it will happen because of the supernatural. That child will return home. That child will not be a wayward child. In your mind, you feel that the child will remain out there and be a wayward. But I declare that that child will return home because your mind should come back in the supernatural. Somebody shout hallelujah. Move in the supernatural. You see, in, 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 
In Daniel chapter 6, verse 21, everybody knew that if the king casted anyone into the den, that person, Boone, will be cracked and eaten by the lion. And everyone saw a lion in the den. With their eyes, their natural eyes, they saw what? Lions in the den. But Daniel, with his supernatural eyes, he saw angels in the den. And even though there were lions in the den naturally, but I see angels. So that I can move around the lions and they can do me no harm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death with lions in the den. But I fear no evil, for God is with me. His rod and his star, they come for me. You see lion, I see an angel. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that will rise up against you, I declare them condemned because there is an angel that is by you. Your going out will be blessed. Yeah. Your coming in will be blessed. Whatever your hands find out to do, God will bless you, the works of your hand. Because you are not moving alone. You are moving with an angel. Somebody shall yes. Move a little bit in the supernatural. And, and they, 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 they feel that you will fail. But in the supernatural, you will not fail. Hallelujah. I feel excited this morning. I feel excited this morning. You see, you see in First Samuel chapter 17, everybody afraid of Goliath. Goliath, Goliath. You know, the reason why some of you have not taken up some dangerous spiritual adventure, it is because of your natural eyes. You look right under you, but I've come to let you know to lift up your hand. Oh, ye gates, for the king of glory and, and, and David, who God was preparing in the field while others went for war with the giant Goliath. And it came to pass that everyone saw a giant. But you know, David saw a bird. <laughs> you didn't hear me. You know, when I was coming up, the sling was used to put the rack in it and we go on the rest farm. The rest farm will use the sling to drive the birds from the rice. And that's what I know it for. So when I, when, when, when I saw in the passage that Goliath was referred to as a giant in the eyes, in the natural eyes of the people, then I knew that David saw Goliath as a bird. That he could use the sling to bring down. Are you hearing me? You see a giant, but I see a bird. Even though he can roll, but I'm going to hunt for a bird and not a giant. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it can happen because my eyes is in the supernatural. What you see is what you have. Lift up your eyes a little more in the supernatural. Are you hearing me? Lift up your eyes a little more in the supernatural. While others are thinking impossibility, that it is impossible to be holy. The Bible says righteousness exhausts a nation. But sin is a depravity or sin is a disgrace to any people. In order to look or move in the supernatural, you need to clean your lives. 
I know some of you, you are excited to move in the supernatural. You try to, but it can't work. It is because your life needs to be clean. And the reason why your life needs to be clean is because you are carrying destinies. When you are carrying destinies, people look up to you. People who want to see God, they see you as their God. You are an image of God. You are a peculiar person, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a child of a king. Let your lives be clean. Are you hearing me? You see, we are in the era that excitement has taken the church rather than righteousness. In order for the church of God to be exalted, righteousness is needed. And in order to move in the supernatural, righteousness is paramount. Are you hearing me? And somebody said, oh, Bishop, it is, it, is, it, is, it is hard, it is a difficult thing to be righteous. But I've come to let you know that you can be. Paul said, there's one thing I do. I press. I press down my desire. I know all of us have desire, but press. Because your eyes are open naturally. You will see temptation, but press. You will hear things, but press. That's why sometimes you need to walk like a blind man even though your eyes are open. But you don't see some things. You don't hear something. You don't feel something. Not because you are weak or blind, but because you want to press. And every little thing gets you upset. I've come to let you know this morning, do not make any decision when you are angry. Okay? Okay? Don't or do not make a decision when you are in an angry mood. I didn't hear an amen for that. I didn't hear an amen for that. And that's free. When you are in an angry mood, break. Take a break. Reflect. Let the pain go through you. It's okay. And, 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 and let the suggestions come from the devil and say you have to retaliate. But, but, but break. Are you hearing me? For I press down my body and bring it on a subjection. Because I'm running a race and I'm running for a prize. So I will not allow things to distract me. Even though I see them, but I break. I want you to shake someone and tell them, take a break. Take a break. Take a break. Take a break. Just, just hit someone and tell them, take a break. If you want to move in a supernatural. Your life needs to be clean. You see, uh, when Joseph, when Joseph was on his journey to greatness, the Bible says from the, from the prison, when he came before Pharaoh, Pharaoh knew that Joseph carried his destinies. So he said, in order for you to take the throne of the prime minister, you guys have to take Joseph to shave him, take his bath, and change his clothes. Because I'm not going to put him on the throne with the clothes that he wore in the prison. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we used to be in the prison of the devil. And now that we are out of the prison of the devil, we need to take our bath, shave, and change our clothes. Because we are about to lead. We are about to become leaders. We are about to carry destiny. But we have to be clean. I'm not saying I'm not saying your natural clothes. I'm talking about the supernatural with inside. Greater is he that is within the inside than the one that you put on. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about inside. You can be a child of God. 
and you're still carrying malice. You are just an angry man or an angry woman every day. No peace in your home. When your wife try to, to, to make peace with you, you are angry. Your husband try to make peace with you, you are angry. You're just an angry man, angry woman. I release the peace of God today over your life. I release the peace of God in your home. I release the supernatural peace of God in your home that everything you find out to do, God will bless it because your eyes have left the natural and you are gone to the supernatural. Natural people doubt. Supernatural people are people with faith. Natural people remember their sinful state. Why the supernatural people forget about what is behind them? Looking ahead. Looking ahead. You see, when Israel on their way to the promised land, the, the, the congregation, they were mixed multitudes. Hmm? And within there, God provided manna for them to eat. But few of them who were in Israelites, now I'm doing small theology, not all that followed Moses were Israelites. Some of them were Egyptians because the mother of those kids stay home and their slave masters came and, and had fun with them and they had kissed by them. But the men couldn't say anything because they were in captivity. So on their way, they brought those kids with them and joined the group. And, and, the, and, and God called that group the mixed multitude. And he said to Moses, now you will see them. Just watch. Because they are, they are not part of the supernatural family. They will soon complain. They will soon, they will soon, they will soon refer to some things in the past. And the Bible says, it came to pass. And the guy said, we are tired of eating manna. We want to eat meat. We want to eat cucumber. We want to eat garlic. Ladies and gentlemen, the things the guys are naming, are they slave food? Meat, the Israelites didn't eat meat in Egypt. They didn't eat garlic. They didn't eat from Pharaoh's table. They were the sons of the Egyptians who the, the slave master went out with the women they got. They Join the mixed multitude. Every time you have people who don't have the supernatural mind, when they join the, the, the pew or join the congregation, there is always confusion. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because what you see, they don't see. Where you want to go, they don't believe that it will happen. Even though you can see a river, you can see a sea and say, let's go. And they are saying, there's a, there's a valley, there's a river. But what you see is that you see a dry ground. Some of you who are businessmen and you're thinking that your businesses are stable. I've come to let you know. To take your eyes from the natural this morning and put it in the supernatural. It's just that God is planting that business. God is planting that life of yours so that when it is grounded, that no storm can hit it and it fall. Because your life, your business, everything of yours is in the supernatural. Are you hearing me? The flowers will fade. The grass will wither. But the supernatural word of God we stand forever. I want you to believe God and believe him to the end and know that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want you to know that you are an eagle who will fly to the zenith of the earth. No man can stop you. The reason why you are still to where you are is because you want to change your feathers. Before I close, I want you to know that the ego that comes in the valley is the ego who fly for 30 years and the wings, the feathers, all gets old. 
It comes in the valley to change its feather. And in the process of changing the feather, it's painful. I don't know the pain you go through, but I've come to let you know that your feathers are coming out. Your old feathers are coming out. And you are about to grow new feathers to fly again. And ladies and gentlemen, the birds that never used to fly equal to the eagle will come to the mouth of the valley and look in the mouth of the valley and mock the eagle. Because the eagle will be going through a painful time. The baby eagle that is called the eaglets will use its peaks to pull the feather from the wings of the eagle. And the eagle will be sharing tears in the valley. And mosquitoes, butterflies, flies will come to the mouth of the valley and start to mock the eagle and say, you used to fly and now you are down. It's not about what they say. It's about you preparing yourself in the supernatural. And sometimes they may feel that you are crazy or, or sometimes they may feel, why, why is she dancing? Why is she speaking in tongues? Why, why, why is she going to, to church every time? Yesterday she was there, today she's there. Yesterday she, she sang, today she's singing. It's okay. The ego said, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on the wings. A lot of people want to mount like a mount, but I waited. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to let you know that waiting time is not wasting time. Your time is not wasted. It's just that God is preparing you because they that wait on the Lord, he will renew their strength. If your business is waiting, let it wait. God is preparing it. If that job is waiting, let it wait. God is preparing it. As we go through the time, it is my ardent hope that at least we will leave the natural. Even though we live in the natural world, but the supernatural controls the natural. That we will lift up our eyes to the supernatural. That God will grant us things that we long for, yes. But because we remain in the natural, we don't have them. I pray that God will take all of us in this place. You can be a pope or what. But God will take you to another level in the supernatural. Because no one, no one comes to the place that they will say, I'm full. I'm okay. I have him. I want to be the Paul who will say in, in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, that I may know him. I want to know him every day of my life, that being in the supernatural, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. It is my prayer that you will know him every day so that you can remain in the supernatural. God bless you this morning. Amen. Can you just lift up your hands to the Lord this morning? Just wave to him. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Give him praise. Give him praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to, I, I want to just offer one prayer point this morning before I leave. I want to pray for some businesses. Some businesses. First group of people. The second group I want to pray for. Just one minute. I want to pray for those who are having tough times with their kids. Maybe kids left the house or kids still in, in the house. And, and there's a problem with the kids. I want to pray for you. If you are here this morning. God, God told me to do that. Can I do that wrong? You know, the, the Lord loves us so much that he brought us manna today. This message was manna for us. This message was God feeding us from his table today. 
And the Lord is letting us know that for the season ahead, we cannot live our lives based on the intellect. We can't smart our way out of it. We're not that smart. We really need revelation. And the message that the man of God brought today was the lifestyle that we are to live. That is our weaponry as God's children. So the Lord challenges us today. And I feel like even as he was sharing today, I felt that in, 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 as we're responding, one of the things that we need to do is respond for thinking that we can figure out our own way through the intellect. We need to re repent for that and ask the Lord to engage us in the realm of the Spirit so that we are moving and living according to revelation. That's why we've not been successful. And that's why many are perishing. They're trying to do it their own way. But God is saying, if you'll live in revelation, I've got the answers for you. I've got the strategy for you. And I'll lead you the way that you should go. So we receive that word today. It's I was driving in this morning. I was just praying the prayer that Paul prayed over the Ephesians. I pray for you that God might grant you. And I was praying, Lord, grant me afresh the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of who you are. I love it. In fact, let me just read it. And I'm going to have you pray over those, brother, that you are going to have come and pray over. But if you have your Bible, just turn to it in Ephesians chapter 1. It is so powerful. We lose sight and we lose track of who Christ is in us and who we are to him. I'm getting there. Hang on. Should have used my phone. It's quicker. Here it is. Let me just read it. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And here's what he prayed for them. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The hope that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Two things. What is the hope of your calling? And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at right hands in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age that is to come. And he who, the Father, put all things under his feet, Jesus' feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. And here's what it says. The church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. God, grant your people a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who you are but also who they are in you, that we are the body of Christ. We're the members of his body. We are the human beings that he has filled with his spirit and called to look into heaven and say, kingdom come, will of God be done on the earth. Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your glory be seen through your children because you have given us a revelation that we're not just anybody. We're not just trying to get through. We're trying to be in a place in you that we are at peace and at rest. We're not striving. We're resting in you. We labor to enter into that rest, that place of peace, so that we can be moved by your spirit to accomplish your purpose in the earth in Jesus' name. Can I have those folks to pray for? You just remain to where you are.
or if you want to come it's better it's better to come we want to pray for you just keep coming from everywhere just like that yeah. I live to worship you Jesus just come to the altar to worship you I live to worship you I live Lift up your hands to the Lord where you are. Lift up your hands. Those of you who are still coming. Continue to come. Continue to come in this place. The presence of the Lord is here. Holy Spirit lift up your hands to the Lord and just begin give it all to him give it all to him I want you to position yourself in the in the supernatural right now as I called my father and the prophet just when you release a word before I pray I just hear the Lord speaking over you right now saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. But I am calling you out to step out into a place you've not stepped out before. I am calling you to step out into a new place. And the Lord says, "You, when, when you step out in faith, understand you won't be there alone. I'll be there with you. I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out of the place where you make your own plans, where you make your own way of figuring things out. I'm calling you out of there. And I'm calling you to the place where I will show you, I will be your strength, and I will give you the vision on how to move forward. I'm calling you out. This is a new day for you to move in my revelation, to move in my might, to move in my power, for this is me calling you out in a new way this season. And the best for you is yet ahead, says the Lord. So Lord, we thank you for this word, and we declare it and seal it over your people. This morning, this morning, every project, every business, everything that a heart is desiring for the upliftment of life, for the enhancement of the kingdom, I may not know them by names. I want you to lift up your voices and just begin to call those projects. Forget about who's standing by you. Call them to come to forth. Lift up your eyes in the supernatural. Come on. You say it. You say it yourself. Lift up your mouth and let's just begin to commit those projects to the Lord. Oh God. Father, we thank you. You say we should bring forth a vision. Even though it times. But it's for an appointed time. Now is the time. I release your supernatural. Breakthrough upon every project every mind and, and, and every job everything that your people desire to do every stagnation in their project I remove it this morning in the name of Jesus I release the power of God to cause them to arise and go forth in the name of Jesus that no harm will stop them no wind will cause them to fall no storm will cause them to fall but Lord, that you will cause them to succeed, that your projects are established. I declare them established today in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the contact points. I thank you that you will bring down your contact. I thank you you will direct them to the right people. I thank you that you will let them everywhere it is close. I open them up in the name of Jesus. Every draw, every fire projects are into. I open up those fires unto you. I lift them up in the smooth supernatural this morning and I declare them to come to pass. I declare them to come to pass. I declare them to come to pass. I declare them to, to be okay. I declare them to be signed and approved in the name of Jesus. Ah. 
Hallelujah. I want all of you who've come here this morning to preserve your home, your kids. I want you to call those kids by their names. I want you to enter the supernatural right now. If you are standing in the gap for a family member, I want you to call them by the name. I don't know their names, but God knows. Call them by their names and declare them to be restored. Lift up your voices and begin to pray that prayer. Masi kaba kando robo si kayaba. Leba kanto kaba yaba. I break every hash of disobedience over the lives of the kids in the name of Jesus. I break every power of satanic manipulation. I break every power of peer pressure in their lives in the name of Jesus. I restore them. I command them to come back to you. I bring them back. I bring them back, back, back. I release the power of God. I draw them to you. I draw them to you. I command those whom to be restored. To be restored. I restore those gifts. I restore. still kill and destroy but Jesus said I've come to give you life and not only life but more abundant life Jesus is the answer to everything anyone really needs remember that keep Christ central to everything you do and let his will become your will let his thoughts become your thoughts in fact pray Lord I pray, transform me by the renewing of my mind so that I can prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God because the good and acceptable perfect will of God is always the place that will cause you to be able to see not what's just around you but what is available to you but not only to you but to everyone that you know and God can use you to stand between them and him and become the conduit which through your prayers and through your love and through the witness of the testimony of the way you live your life can bring hope wherever you go, can bring peace wherever you go. I pray that in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and the Lord grant you his peace. May you walk in his grace and in his favor. May your mind be filled with the thanksgiving of goodness and grace that God has showed to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.